I first learned about the variation in children's drawings when I was about four. My teacher told the class to draw a self-portrait at home. I was a bit ambitious and wanted to make it really realistic, so I asked my mum for help. My mum said that I could make it look really realistic by drawing a proper nose. Up until then I had been drawing noses as little dots, but mum showed me that noses have these lumpy bits around the nostril, and the bridge of the nose joins up with the eyebrow. So really they look more like this. My mind was blown. So I went back to school, proud of my nice new nose, feeling special because everyone else was still drawing dots for their noses, but my teacher was not so proud. That's an ugly nose, she said. This is the way you're meant to draw a realistic nose. But my teacher was wrong, because this is a perfectly good way that children draw noses, and so is this, 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 and they are all valid noses. You might be thinking, well, not all of those look like noses. You're probably used to only a few forms of stylized noses, probably western, but these are noses from all over the world. And you might then be thinking, um, people's noses aren't that different, right? Like, sure, there are differences in nose shape, but there aren't really any noses that look like... that. Well, if you don't like these noses, then you are going to hate this drawing of a person. And now you're probably thinking, how is that a person? Wait, let me make the body parts clear for you. See? It's got all the parts that make up a person. It must be a person. This is a way to draw the body that's common in the art of young Indian children. The body parts are strung onto a long, thin line, and the head is shown as a separate entity to the facial features. Oh, you might prefer this one. This is a typical body drawn by a young Iranian child. There isn't a boundary to the face like we might expect there to be. These bodies are a bit more familiar, but their shapes might seem a bit odd. The square body is typical of Yoruban children, and children of African Islamic countries. The hourglass body is typical of the Damara people of Namibia. Both of these use the shapes of traditional clothing to indicate the shape of the body. The same happens in Western art. Women tend to have triangles representing dresses, and men tend to have long legs, like they're wearing long trousers. That's a nice, obvious way that children's drawings can tell us about different cultures. People in different cultures look visually different, so they get drawn differently. But there's a lot more that we can learn about culture from children's drawings. In the West, children tend to draw the face facing forwards most of the time, and usually start drawing the face in profile at the age of 7 to 9. This is speculated to be because drawing a face in profile means they need to understand the concept of looking at things from different viewpoints. And children under 7 haven't learnt yet that their own viewpoint is not what everyone sees. But over half of Maori children are regularly drawing faces in profile at the age of just 5. Does this mean that the Maori children learn earlier than Western children that different viewpoints from their own exist? Well, maybe. It hasn't been ruled out. But it might also be that those Maori children were exposed to more pictures of people in profile, or just more art overall, and so they had a greater bank of artistic knowledge to draw from. Cultures that make art part of everyday life and place high importance on it tend to produce children who are more advanced in drawing. When art becomes part of everyday life, though, children are exposed to certain stylized versions of the human form, and those impact their own drawing attempts. For example, Japanese children are exposed to manga and anime, where heads and faces tend to be disproportionately large, so their art tends to have much larger heads and faces than English children of the same age who haven't been exposed to the same style of art. I mentioned earlier that in Western children's drawings, men tend to have long trousered legs and women have triangle dresses, but children's drawings can reveal more gender differences than just the visual. In some cultures, Though not all, boys tend to draw more aggressive, angular figures, while girls draw figures with more curves and more neutral expressions. Western boys draw more dinosaurs and vehicles, while Western girls draw more people and animals, particularly horses. Cultural gender roles seem to manifest in both how a child draws and what a child draws. There is one thing that seems to occur in all cultures, suggesting perhaps a biological origin. 
girls' art tends to advance faster than boys' art. Children's art can also show us what a culture values and how children learn what the culture values. In Western society, for example, small, dainty noses are considered more beautiful on women. This is probably why my teacher called my big nose ugly and encouraged me to draw a more elegant nose. Children's art can also tell us about when children begin to draw and the opportunities they have. Western children start to draw very early in their life, usually at about two years old. So their first attempts at drawing are scribbles, or attempts at conveying information that they don't completely understand yet. Usually they start with the face, because that portrays emotion. And they make the face really big, because it's important. And they make little stick arms and legs, because those don't matter enough for much detail, but they're very visible. But if you take an older child, say from a rural area in Papua New Guinea, a 15 year old girl who's never really been exposed to drawing or been to school, and ask her to draw a person for the first time ever, she won't start the same way as a child who starts drawing at two, because she has a greater visual knowledge of the world already. She isn't going to draw a really big face, because she knows that heads aren't actually that big. She draws the hands and feet big, because that's what's useful. She understands the body as a whole entity, so she draws the contour of the whole figure, rather than drawing all the parts separately like a western child. Children's art can also tell us about how cultures interact. That older child from Papua New Guinea I just mentioned had never been to school, but western schools run by Christian missionaries operated in Papua New Guinea at the time that study was conducted and children who went to that school didn't produce the distinctive contour figures that unschooled children from the same country did. They made a western style figure. It's worth mentioning at this point that a lot of the studies I've mentioned took place from about 1930 to 1950. The world back then was not as connected as it is now. At the start of this video I showed some drawings in the styles of different cultures based on real drawings, but all of those drawings are from the 1970s at the latest. It's not easy to find more recent drawings from different parts of the world, and when I have found them they kind of just look like western ones. Western art is everywhere, and influencing children everywhere. Children's art, I think, is something we take for granted. We think children's drawings look weird because they don't know how to draw properly yet, and that the weird tadpole figures are the default way for art to progress. We don't really consider why children's art is the way it is and we don't really give it that much value, unless it's our own children's. But no art should be taken for granted, and looking at children's drawings from different cultures reminds us that nothing can be treated as the default way that humans do things. Culture impacts even the smallest things, and even the smallest things can reveal culture. Most of this video owes its existence to the book Children's Drawings by Maureen Cox. But most of all, it owes its existence to my mum, who I stole that book from as an eight-year-old, and who taught me how to draw noses. <laughs>